Hello players and Reddit data hoarders. This is my server, this is my gun, this keyboard's for typing, this is in case of a power outage and we need to shut down the machine safely as to not damage any hardware. This is my server, so this is where all of our home entertainment is saved. So I'll give you a tour of this, as well as the rat's nest of cables that are in the back there, and what I plan to do in order to make this look a lot nicer. So the server is running Windows 10 and it's sort of running headless. So I have a keyboard and mouse on top here, just your bog standard Microsoft keyboard and mouse, nothing fancy, just to control it in case Windows RT RDP decides not to respond and uh, caused me some problems. I've also got a really long HDMI cable, which goes from here to a monitor over there, one of my main monitors, so I can actually get a display if there's a big problem. Eventually I want to get a server rack here, because uh, this is full, and that'll make it look a lot nicer. Another one of these, which will just essentially be a JBOD of hard drives, and we'll get to hard drives in a minute. But let's take a look at what's on top first. So this is just the modem from an ISP. So it's cable, basic cable modem there. Not very exciting. What is very exciting is this. This is a UPS. I got given this one very kindly by somebody for free. It is a 300 watt UPS. Now that may not sound like a lot, but I have a power monitor plugged in here here, which measures the amount of watts that this system draws. And at idle, it's anywhere between 60 and 90, and under load, barely goes above 200. Now, it does come with software that you install on the machine, so that when either the power is disconnected or the USP is disconnected, it will send a signal to Windows to tell it to shut down while it's running on battery power. So let's take a tour around the back. We've got the USB which connects to the machine, to the PC. We've got power out and power in. And the power out just plugs into the PC as it would normally. Okay, so I've moved this camera a little bit closer. Sorry about this camera being in frame on there, but yeah, don't worry about it too much. So this is the drive cage where all the hard drives are stored. Okay, so we do have a little bit of space left for hard drives, but all my SATA ports are full. So unfortunately, I cannot put any more in without an expansion card. Okay, so I have labeled all of these. So we've got a four terabyte, eight terabyte, an old 500 gig, a four terabyte, four terabyte, one terabyte. And I'm pretty sure that's either a one terabyte or a four terabyte. I'm not sure because I haven't labeled it. Probably that's the one that died from RMA, I think, and I've sent that back. But these two here are two 500 gigs. They are what I use for archives. So there's a terabyte of archive storage there, which is on a different system to these. So that terabyte isn't taken up across those drives. All of these drives are pulled in software called Drive Pool. So I've got two Drive Pools, one for the main storage array and one for the archive. And I'll go through Drive Pool probably in a second video as I talk about the software that holds all this kind of stuff together. So we've also got 24 gigs of RAM. So we've got three eight uh, gigabyte slots there. There's a bit of dust, I'll take that out of bay number four. I did have eight more gigabytes, but I used them for a separate build because they cost the earth right now and I can't afford to keep buying DDR3 RAM when it's obsolete and ludic ludicrously expensive. That RAM that I've got in there is actually worth more now than when I paid first paid for it three years ago. Yeah, right. Okay, so we just got a nice Arctic uh, i11 caller there. So this is on the old Haswell refresh hardware, which is perfectly good for this kind of setup, except I will be upgrading this year at some point because I want to go Ryzen. And I want to go Ryzen for a couple of reasons. One is virtualization. I'd like to get quite a lot of what this machine does uh, separated off into different VMs. That'd be quite nice. I also want to set up a game server. So that would be Steam Link in its own VM. Running a GTX 970, which is my old graphics card that I could put in here and have that power. That would be perfectly good for 1080 gaming across a network. Another thing I want to do is get all the game saves onto this network. Now, to, in order to do that, I need to upgrade the network to 10 gigabits so loading times aren't absolutely ridiculous. Check in the video description below for a video that I made last year, I think, which was testing loading times over a gigabit 
network. So I had about five or six games installed on a network hard drive connected by hardline gigabit over cat six, but it's still gigabit because both, all the connections are gigabit. So there's that. And it, it tested the load times of those games. So the games loaded absolutely fine, most of them, and it didn't have an impact on performance, only the load time. So if I can get a 10 gigabit network, that will take the bottleneck out of those load times and I can chuck a bunch of SSDs in here, run games on those SSDs, and then have that kind of re-performance from the SSDs without having to have them all on the local machine and they could be accessed by any computer, which would be pretty sweet. And they could be accessed by the virtual machine Steam Link Share as well. That's, that's, the, that's the idea, that's the plan. So back to the system. The motherboard is a ASRock Z97 Extreme 6. Power supply is the Corsair HX850i, which is an 850 watt power supply. Probably overkill for this system, but originally it did have a 970 in it. I was using it as a media creation machine as well. I've actually got a separate machine now. And the majority of power supplies do not go out of date, which is really nice. It's time to go back to shaky hand cam now to look at this router, this dusty router. This is the Asus RTAC66U. I've had this router for a couple of years and it has been rock solid. I've had no problems with it other than the occasional having to reboot it to clear some network problems, but it is a fantastic router. Over here is a gigabit smart switch. I haven't used any of the smart features and just used it as an unmanaged switched for now. There is quite a bit of mess, but eventually this is going to be wall mounted and the cables are going to be cable managed properly. I've also got a video about cable management in the living room, making the cables behind your TV look nice. I should have probably applied that here. The link for that video is in the description. So eventually I'm going to tidy all of these up. This is connected to an aerial, just use bog standard TV aerial so we can get live television on the server. And the live television that comes into the server gets pumped around the network and can be picked up on nearly every device that we have via PVR. It works especially nice in the living room with Kodi. For all the recording and scheduling, things like that, it's handled by the server and it just displays across the network. Okay, so it's time for a live UPS demonstration. If you're wondering what UPS is, it's not the delivery company I'm talking about. It stands for uninterruptible power supply, which means it will continue to deliver power to the machine even if the mains power has been cut because there's a battery inside here. Now this battery is quite small, but will last for about five minutes on battery power to power this kind of machine. Now that means that while it's not gonna be usable in those five minutes, it is gonna shut the machine down safely, which means it's gonna protect all 10 hard drives that I've got in there from failing or becoming damaged. So this plug socket here is for the UPS. Now if I disconnect this mains power, the UPS power will kick in and it will send a signal to the machine to tell it to turn off. So let's do that now. You'll hear a beep from the UPS like that. That's to tell you that the mains power has been disconnected and it's running on battery. It has sent a signal to the machine and that should shut it down safely. The beeps do get faster the more battery it uses and it will essentially flatline when the battery is almost completely empty. So the fans have stopped spinning, the machine is off, no damage to any hardware, even in the event of a power outage. There also is surge protection on there and things like that. Now, if the power was to come back on, this machine is set to power on when power is reconnected. So, we plug that in. The UPS gets power. The machine gets power. And we are back online. So no messing about. So you may be wondering what you actually use a server like this for. Well, I use it to save terabytes and terabytes of files so that every computer has access to all the files all in one place. There are automatic cloud backups that I've set up for data that can't be replaced, photos, things like that. There is redundancy options in DrivePool and that's part of the software side of this, which I'll get to in part two. So look out for that video. Until next time, keep playing, players.